Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about school, back to school. And yes, for some in the province of Ontario, for example, it's been a very long time. So tonight we're going to talk about traffic rules, regulations around school signs and those types of things to make you a safer, smarter driver. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Back to school driving and school buses are going to be on the roads in rural areas within cities and those types of things and of course cautionary lights strobe lights and extended stop sign arms with flashing lights on the stop signs all of this is conducive to school buses in north america and they are yellow in color so back to school driving and the defensive driving model that I am proposing that I have created and founded is called Spock 3. So the three Spocks, young Spock, middle Spock, you know, middle aged Spock, and then there's old Spock. And that stands for social driving, which is the way that people drive after they get their license. They keep up with traffic flow, so they're often, often driving faster than the posted speed limit, not stopping completely at stop sign intersections, driving over painted islands, me first kind of attitude, following too close, it's reactionary and those types of things. So all of that is what you're going to be encountering when you're driving. And then the first component of making yourself a safer, smarter driver in the arena of social driving is space management. And because a lot of us are in urban areas that have a lot of traffic and it's very difficult to you know, have an out, around your vehicle, you can always manage the space in front of your vehicle. Always have that three to four second following distance. That way you can have time and time buys you options and therefore you can respond appropriately in the event of something going wrong on the roadway as it's going to happen in the arena of social driving. Speed management, speed management allows you to control your space around your vehicle because if you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit something you control your speed, you observe correctly with your scanning patterns, looking far down the road, checking your mirrors, and knowing and track, monitoring, mapping and tracking vehicles around you and your speed in relation to them. And then finally, you have to communicate with other traffic as well in the ways that we communicate, lights and signals, uh, horn, use your horn sparingly because in this day and age, it's seen as a sign of aggression. Hand gestures, appropriate hand gestures. Don't tell anybody they're number one on a road test. And then eye contact and the position of your vehicle on the roadway will communicate your intentions and the attention of other drivers on the roadway. School signs. So there are a number of school signs that you will encounter as kids are going back to school and you're driving in and around your neighborhoods. And you're gonna find that school signs are not consistent. Some of them are regulatory, as you can see down in the bottom right-hand corner there. All of them are regulatory signs, but they have different shapes. But for the most part, they're pentagon in shape, which means they look like a house. They have a gable roof on them and they're square, but the colors are not consistent. They can be blue, they can be green, they can be yellow, and they can be kind of a neon color as well. And I've also seen them as cautionary signs. So they're the least consistent of the traffic signs on our roadways. But I think that authorities are moving towards making these more consistent so that people know that there's a school in the area sign slow when students are present these are becoming less and less common on our roadways because they're confusing for drivers school speed zones which you have to do this posted speed limit when school is in session only when school is in session and then school crosswalk signs these are crosswalks that are in front of the school building and these are regulatory signs because they're rectangular in shape white background with black lettering and symbols on them. And the other piece that I forgot is, is that school signs are pentagon in shape. They also always have two people on them as opposed to a playground sign which has one person on it. So that's a playground sign. School signs have two people on them, okay? New video last week was the sixth and last driving lesson with Ariel. And I'll put up a short video here in the week or so uh, showing you her results on her driver's test, but essentially it was just mock driving test and showing you what was needed for the driver's test and getting her ready for her driver's test that week. So have a look at that if you haven't seen that already. Live stream every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We answer all of your questions about driving, passing a driver's license test, becoming a safer, smarter driver, or starting a career as a truck or bus driver. Click up in the corner here, set a reminder for Sunday's live stream, and we'll see you then.
So school zone, speed zone sign. This is a regulatory sign and it's only in effect when school is in session. And if you're on a driver's test and you don't know where the school zones are in and around the DMV or the test center where you're gonna be taking your test, I encourage you, really encourage you to go out and figure out where these are because if you speed in a school speed zone during your driver's test when school is in session, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. Slow when students present on highways. These, as I said, are beginning to disappear because many drivers find these confusing. They don't know whether they need to slow or do the speed limit when students are walking along the highway in and around school areas in kind of, usually they're found in rural areas or you know there's less populated areas and those types of things. So these are where you're gonna find these conditional signs along the roadways in and around schools. And then school buses, we talked about these at the introduction. You're gonna find them in both the city and in the country. Going to schools, they're yellow. They will have both yellow cautionary lights that will activate before the bus comes to a complete stop. And then once the bus comes to a stop, the red lights will activate. When the driver stops the bus completely, the driver will open the door. The stop sign with the flashing lights on it will extend and you must come to a stop. Behind the bus, usually about three vehicle lengths, and if you're on the other side of approaching the vehicle, usually on a two lane, you have to stop far enough back that children can cross safely in front of the bus. And most of these buses are gonna have, uh, it's called a cattle guard, which is basically a piece of plastic at the front, which forces the students to walk out around the front of the bus. So the driver has a clear view of, they're not like tied up against the grill in front of the school bus. So that's the other thing that they have on them for purposes of safety. And let me tell you that if you don't stop for a school bus, it's a severe penalty if you get caught. And know that many of these school buses now are going to have cameras on them and those types of things. So they're gonna be able to get your information, uh, your license plate and whatnot. School crossing guards, these people have the same authority as a police officer. You must obey the directions of crossing guards. We can kind of have a discussion about this, where you find crossing guards in and around where you live, because where we live, they're generally at you know controlled intersections with traffic lights and those types of things. So they're just there as kind of a secondary precaution. But there are other places that crossing guards will be that are not controlled intersections. So that's the other thing. Mostly, but not always at busy intersections, as I said there. And here, where my kids go to school, we have one at a controlled intersection. It's a busy controlled intersection. And oftentimes we have a roundabout where we walk to school and I often think that the crossing guard would do, be more proactive at the roundabout as opposed to at the controlled intersection. So just my thinking. Okay, we're gonna leave it there for tonight. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. We'll help you out to get your license, make you a safer, smarter driver. Hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down in the comment section. We'll do what we can to help you out to get a license and those types of things. So if you passed your license in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on that. All the best. And if you got a test coming up this week, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.